everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Joey Evans. I'm Roy Kenny. I'm Z Garcia. Today we're taking a look at one of my most anticipated games from the Spiel at Essen this year, and that is Path of Civilization, which is from Captain Games, who their last two games have been little tiny party games. Mm. So mm. this was kind of a surprise. Mm. But these are the same folks, many of the people involved in this, um, from Repos, who mm. did Seven Wonders, and the designer of this game, uh, Fabian, is also the designer of... Turing Machine. Turing Machine, <sighs> thank you. Which is... Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. But what made me want to play this game was the fact that everyone plays at the same time. Mm -hmm. Here's a brief overview. In this game, each player is trying to get points. You're going to get points in a whole ton of different ways, but let's talk about how the game plays. You're going to start out with five cards. Tools, Tribe, Rituals, Hunting, and Fire. And every round of the game, you're going to place four cards in these four slots, and then you're going to pick another card and discard that card. It might be worth points in the game but you'll never see that card again. And as the game goes by, you're going to get more cards. You'll always, at the end of every round, you must buy a new card. And these cards will be better things because each card that you put here, if there's cubes in these areas, and there's no cubes in your beginning cards, but as you can see, as time goes by, this is gonna allow you to put cubes in different areas in the game. And then these, this side, on this side, the two cards you play here, will move you up the tracks, although you'll see this one moves you up farther. So this would move me up one on the blue track and one on the red track, the warfare track and the religion track. Moving up the tracks is important because at the end of every turn, you have to buy a card. You're forced to buy a card. And these cards in the bottom of each of these spots cost one of that particular track, then four, then seven, then 10. I mean, look how amazing the cards get when they're at level four here. Look, it's gonna move up the orange track too and the brown track. But not only that, whenever you buy a card, you also get a bonus, which might be some cubes. It might move you up on the military track. It might move you up somewhere else. And the bonuses get better as you go farther. By the way, I do wanna mention these trays here. They have these symbols on both sides of them. And they all stack and have a lid on them for the end of the game. So players are going to be putting cubes as you get as the game goes farther into different spots on the board. And these cubes are going to be used in different ways. Uh, in between each round, players have, if you have enough cubes here, so here I need two cubes, you'll move up on this religion track, which is going to give you points here at the end of the game. And as you move on, you'll flip these tiles and pick one of them to be a bonus. Like this one here gives me one in the victory point square. You can use cubes here to pay for Wonders of the World. Wonders of the World will have victory points at the end of the game and will also give you benefits. Like this one immediately gives you one in the person column. And people are the same way. When you, you can spend this and you'll get people. Although a leader can give you a permanent benefit. For example, Julius Caesar, if he's my leader, while he's alive, every turn at the end of my turn, my red track is gonna move up one. Um, while other people might have things that change whether they're alive or dead. So Gandhi, for example, here has the same ability. When you get him, you can turn soldiers into victory points. And when he dies, you can change soldiers into victory points. And then there's some like Albert Einstein here who are just worth points at the end of the game. And leaders and wonders are gonna come out over the course of the game and get more powerful. Starting in round three, there's gonna be a vent at the end of each of these rounds. And there is a huge deck of cards. I think there's 12 for each of these. So every game you're gonna have different events. The odd number rounds have a victory point event where you're gonna get points for the number of cubes you have in here plus something else. Like for example, this one gives it to you for orange cards. Then there's a battle event on the even number rounds. And for that, players are gonna be keeping track of their military here. You'll be gaining military uh, from various things over the course of the game, but you'll also be spending soldiers cubes from here to add two to your strength for a particular battle. And battles basically just give you the highest person gets one reward, the second highest, third highest, and so on. Although there's always a neutral guy on the board who counts as one of those places. So you want to be higher than him if you want to get the top awards. And when you get to the final round, round nine, there's a victory point and, and a battle that are going to happen in that round. There's a few other things that are going on in the game. The, you have a population track here. 
the number underneath the population track, you want to increase this because the number is the number of cubes and or things. So this says, I'm going to go up seven times on the tracks. So I need to be at least here in the population to get all seven of those. Also, population gives you more cubes in getting great leaders. And at the very end here, we'll get you victory points. Speaking of victory points, all the cards you've gotten over the course of the game are going to be possibly worth victory points. That one's zero, but this one's worth two. You get points for leaders, you get points for people, you get points that you've earned over the course of the game that come from those victory points at the end of each round. You get points from winning battles, you get points from just all sorts of different things, and whoever has the most is the winner. Now, I'm going to jump into this saying I really, 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 really like this game. But it doesn't look spectacular. There's a lot of noise on the table. It takes up a good chunk of the mm -hmm. table. And don't get me wrong, it, the iconography is great. Mm -hmm. You play the cards, you know what to do. If it's a circle, mm -hmm. it's move the cylinder. If it's a, cube, if it's a square, you put a cube out. The cubes go here. Right. You spent these cubes to do this. What does this person do? Sometimes you have to look up what the leader and the world wonder do, but for the most part, they make sense. Yeah. Everything, it, it's smooth, but it doesn't, no one stops by a table and goes, ooh, I want to play that. Instead, they're more like, that looks complicated. And we're like, no, it's not. But And it's not. It's not. This is not an elegant looking game. Yes. Right. It's sort of like, Bleh! and there's right. stuff everywhere, but once you know what's going on, it's pretty clean. Like yeah, I can't sure. think of another Civ game that is no. this quick, this clean, and this big also. Yeah, because you know I would say I mean? Seven Wonders is. Yeah, but it's, it's cleaner, and it's much more elegant. Seven mm -hmm. Wonders, I would say, is more elegant than this. It's also like sort of Civ. It's more window dressing Civ than this. This feels more like a Civ game. It does. But yeah. no going in. It's pretty abstract still. Oh, for sure. sure. It's very but abstract. that's what you get in an hour. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, the game boils down to that simultaneous action of picking those four cards and choosing one of them to get rid of. And I kind of love that idea of like, oh man, I'm choosing these to build up to get either these cubes that are going to help me get better stuff, or these, these are going to let me get stats here, and trying to figure out where you need to focus and where your opponents are focusing, being like, oh, he's probably going to grab the good leader. Let me go over here and do religion instead. You know, that sort of thing. I love the forced evolution. Yes. Right. I love that you have five cards, uh -huh. you have to burn one, and you often buy a new one. No, you have to. Well, you, you buy, buy okay, new. okay. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it's like that forced evolution of like, you have to cycle your little pool yep. of five cards. You dump one, you get one, you dump one, you get... I love that. And again, sometimes you're like, oh, I love all of these. That's but the you thing. have to move on. I love, hate the difficult decisions. You're like, I just got that card two rounds ago, but gotta let it go. Yeah. yeah I like that. And there's and then, all, all the different kind of like, it's almost like a tech tree as you're going up and choosing which things you want to do. Do you want to get a small card from that right now? Or do you want to like let that resource build up a little bit higher and be like, I'm going to get the atomic bomb, you know, that sort of thing, you know. That's the thing too, because once, once you decide which cards you're going to keep, then you need to decide which side to put them on. And you're like, ah, you know, I like that too. There's, mm -hmm. there's so many great decisions in that. And the fact that it happens all at the same time does not slow the game down. One There's the, all the tactics, too, and then, like, but the cards you keep, and, you know, mm -hmm. you're also looking at the scoring cards, and you're going, I don't really want these blue yeah. cards, but I got I to gotta keep blue. I'm right. scoring blue in a couple <laughs> rounds. <laughs> I know. I want to dump the blue cards. I like that. I love the way they handled, like, the markets in this game. You have, like, a market of leaders or a market of, like, things, and the way they handled it and keeping it simultaneous at the same time is that each player board has these different icons, like, priority icons on it. And it's just really cool the way that they made that come together where it's like, okay, like, Tom's character's really good at getting the combat cards. My character's really good at getting the leadership, and you can kind of know that going in, being like, okay, I can do this. Okay, you get to pick first. First, and I'll go oh, yeah, that one. It's really cool because normally you can't do that in a simultaneous game with a market like that, but this was really innovative. Yeah, I didn't explain that in the rules, but yeah, it's too. It, when it's time to buy the leaders and wonders, multiple people can try to get them. Yeah. And if me and Z want the same person, we have a track. So if, my, if I, we both want a military leader, if my military is higher than Z's, I have first shot to get that military leader. But he's probably higher at me right. to get other leaders. <clears throat> and honestly, it doesn't happen a ton. But it's a great way to do simultaneous mm -hmm. actions with an open card market. Like it's, I, I think that's really innovative overall. Yeah, it's nice and clean. It, if mm -hmm. you need to resort to that, it's right there. It's nice that it comes right out the gate. I mean, the first turn is nothing. You're going to move up two tracks and buy a card. But you're also deciding which card you're throwing out. <laughs> okay? Yes. Yeah. So you're throwing out one card, and then that first card you buy starts you on that 
that domino effect. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I want a military card. But here's the thing. Military card doesn't increase my military track. So maybe I want to buy one of the cards that increases the mm -hmm. military track instead and then get a better military card. Right. It's kind of, they, they all feed into each other. One, one of the cards helps build your population. One gives you world wonders. One helps you move on that religion track, which you can get tons of resources from. And everything, I thought, feels balanced and to the point where I think some people might consider it balanced to a fault. That's right. amazing, yeah. yeah. I do like that everything you do in this game gives you something. Mm -hmm. It's like even just buying a card, yep. which yep. is something you'll do you know, you'll utilize next round, but when you buy a card, it's like, oh, and then you get these cubes and these bumps on the, like, everything you do, you're like, woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo, yeah. moving up things, cubes, cube me over there, yes, oh my god, okay, more, buy a thing, I have this, like, yeah. every, it's this incredible, I don't think I've, I've ever played a Civ game that has this sort of forward momentum. Right. It is this incredible sort of burst out the gate the slowest part of the game is the first few turns because your cards are pretty weak, mm -hmm. and you immediately expel those, and you're just sort of barreling mm -hmm. through these, you know, however many turns it is, combat, score, 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 combat, get things. You're constantly getting something. And then you're still dealing with five cards in your turn, so it doesn't slow yes. down. Mm. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and the leader, right? I mean, right, like, that's right. it. It's like, oh, you right. might have a lead. You have a leader, but you're really looking at five and going like, oh, I, this one's out. Yeah. Four, I, boom. I do enjoy also that there's a large variety of the different scoring cards, and you have all those kind of, like, set up, and you kind of have to be like, okay, so this game, religion's right. going to be important, or this game, uh, like, engineering or whatever, or construction's going to be important, coal's going to be important, whatever you need to have specifically for that, like, setup of cards. And as you're playing the game, you can kind of try to see where you need to focus on that sort of stuff and figure out, are the combats going to be worth it this time? Maybe I pull back on that, you know, just different things on trying to focus on which areas to kind of, like, push forward to in the game. Yeah. Now, one thing to note, there's not a ton of player interaction. All right, right. so keep no. that in mind. The combat, the military, is not against other players. It's more of a who's farther down a track. That is interaction to some degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I'm trying to be farther than you, but, I mean, it's just another way of scoring. And whoever moves farther, fastest on the faith track can decide what those bonus right. tiles are. There, and also, again, sometimes it's fighting over who gets the wonders and the leaders. But other than that, you are doing your own thing. So keep that in mind because some people want that interaction. Some people are afraid of combat. Well, it's, again, it's, you're not really fighting each other in this yeah. game. Right. Yeah. No. What would you give it? Right, I come in. At first, Civ game, I was looking for the map. There's no map. There's no anything. But I do feel like that's advancing through civilization. As you get the cards, you end up with the Apollo mission or whatever. Mm -hmm. It goes pretty fast, though. It does. You're it like, does whoa, kinda, yeah, all of a sudden the A-bomb's here. <laughs> it's like, this is crazy. I like it a lot. I would give this 8.5. I can see it going up because I really enjoy... The decisions, and then it's you still only have that that limited scope on your turn, and keeps things moving. The speed of this game, I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. so eight point five for me. I'm giving it the exact same thing. Eight point five, and Civ games are not really my thing. Right, it's not a, a genre I gravitate towards. This is one of the ones that is I've found of the few I've played that is simply one of the easiest to play. Mm -hmm. It has that forward momentum. It is so. Yeah straightforward to get into, you know? And you sort of, the difficulty of the game ramps with you. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the game, it's like, put these four cards on, the, it's like, oh, well, they don't even do anything on this one side yet. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, cool, get two cubes. Like, that's basically it. Like, yeah. you do very little at the beginning, <clears throat> and by the end, you're like, blah, look at everything. <laughs> Buy that, it gives me 12 things. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. that yeah. It feels video gamey. I think it's what I like about it. The game sort of goes woof. Hmm. Um, it's a it's an easy game to digest, and I'm I'm impressed by that. So, eight point five for me. My score is slightly lower, but there's no negative here because I still really like the game. I'm giving it an eight. I really enjoy the simultaneous stuff. I really enjoy the stuff. This is very much a Euro, Euro, Euro game. You sure. Know, there's not a whole lot of interaction here. I mean, the combat is just racing up a track, yeah. um, which I do enjoy that a little bit of interaction and trying to like race to the different characters a little bit has a little bit of interaction there. But this is a, a game that I really enjoy if I'm going to play a Euro style game. And I really love the simultaneous action. I love the innovation of the simultaneous action that they've done with this, how you're picking those cards and, and and trying to race to all the different stuff. It's really enjoyable, so it's an eight for me. 
So I first played this, I really enjoyed it, but there's something that really has stuck with me. One is, the, the game is very quick. I mm. really like that. Yes, that's great. And I played this with one of the slowest players I know, and it still went pretty quick. <laughs> um, but two, the second time I played this game, I accidentally got from the publisher a German copy. And so I, was, I started playing it out, I was like, oh, it's in German. It's like, I think we can play it anyway. So we set the whole game up, and I was able to teach, from having played once, I was able to teach the entire game wow. without looking at the rule book. No. We had one <laughs> rules question, which uh, you know I was able to look up later. It was about how you break ties in, on, a, on the military track. But other than that, that was really impressive to me. And it's also impressive to me. I never look in the rule book, almost ever. Once That's in a while, awesome. I'll look up a leader or a wonder. You forget how they are. But that, I really love. I love how fast the game is. Mm -hmm. I love the multitude of choices. I love that every game is different because the leaders and wonders will be different and the scoring cards will be different yes. and they put yeah. a ton in there. Yes. So for me, this is a nine. I, mm. And it's, I like Civilization anyway, but that Civilization to me is the mechanisms of this. Right. I like games that give me gobs of goodness. The Civilization trapping makes me like them even more. Right. Like, Hedera is like a game like that too. It's like, sure. It's like Civilization-ish. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's a cool theme, but also look at all the stuff I'm getting. This is this is all along that line. And I think a lot of people might be afraid of this because it looks so big and intimidating. Right. It's actually pretty easy to play. It is. So that's Path of Civilization. I'm Tom Basil. I'm Joy Evans. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Z Garcia. And you've been watching the next world leader. Well, Which one of us is it? No. It's him. Okay. It's Roy. Okay. No.